normally when I set a control date, the forensic center is kind enough to send me a letter that says, you know, we're not done yet, it's coming shortly, whatever. They haven't done it in this instance, so we'll just tell you it's going to be August 2nd at 8.30, and I think she'll be back from maternity leave by then. Okay? Yep. No, you can't approach, but you can come up behind me. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't know your name, sir. Hi, Judge. Pat Muscat. Mr. Muscat, do you have enough chairs for Miss Lindsay and her support staff? Um, there might be one more. There's one. I'm not going to move it, okay? But there's a chair right there in the witness box that you can take and use. <coughs> well, thank you very much. I will warn you, there seems to be a big extension cord running right behind that blue container. I was looking for a power outlet to plug into. Are you the guy that's going to run the... I am the I'm if the we guy. get to it? Yeah, I used to just unplug the TV cameras. <coughs> Come no, on, you know. Okay, we're going to have to scoot to your left and make room for people, please. Is who here? Let me better check with the deputies. Deputy Williams, do you have a Mr. Lattimore in detention? Yes, ma'am, we do. He can go back. Okay. I got his paperwork right here. Okay.
speed between Mr. Robinson, yes, I am ready to begin. Thank you. Mr. Robinson, just don't let anybody sit in that broken chair. No. Thank you. Mrs. Cleves, please somebody make a spot for Mrs. Cleves. Please. Wait a minute. Mr. Robinson, would you approach? Yes, Your Honor. No, right to Ms. Threlkeld, would you make a copy of all of that jazz on my copy machine? Yes, Your Honor. Unless Mr. Manley has a copy for the prosecution this I morning? Do. Okay, give it back. Are we ready to go on the record? Should have been served before now, Mr. Manley. Put it on the record, please. Put it on the record, please. Yep. Miss Lindsay, are you and your staff ready to proceed, ma'am? Yes, Your Honor, we are. Mr. Manley, are you and your staff ready to begin? 
We're ready to proceed to the motions to disqualify the Wayne County Prosecutor. I'll run office. my courtroom, please. I asked if you were ready to proceed, sir. Yes. Okay. This is in the matter of Mateen Cleves, 16T, 538FY. May I have your appearances only at this time? Good morning, Your Honor. Lisa Lindsay on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan, P39575. Okay, whoever's got the phone, shut it off. Well, you don't have to shut it off, put it on vibrate. Good morning, Your Honor. Patrick Muscat on behalf of the people, P51482. Good morning, Your Honor. David Champagne on behalf of the people, P71482. Please wait till this thing go, sure, quits going off. I don't hear it off yet. I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. David Champagne on behalf of the people, P78216. Okay. Mr. Muscat, would you repeat your P number because I think that thing was dinging. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. P51482, Patrick Muscat, M-U-S-C-A-T. Okay. Uh, Frank Bailey on behalf of Mr. Martin, please. You can speak up. Good morning, Your Honor. Danielle McCluskey, P40583. Your Honor, good morning. Nicholas Robbins on behalf of Mr. Cleese. And Scott Baker on behalf of Mr. Cleese. Court will start this out, Mr. Manley. I am extremely upset. You have had more than a month in which to file motions, and at 3.50 yesterday, there were three motions and a brief filed. I don't know. There's no proof of service. I don't know if the prosecution got a copy. It, depending on what is argued this morning, may cost this court the whole day. And you waited until an hour before, well, actually, nine minutes before the close of the court to file this motion that I believe should have been filed in plenty of time to allow the prosecutor to respond to it. As it was this morning, I received word from my staff that the prosecutor did not have a copy. I went out to ask Ms. Lindsay if she had a copy, and she declined to talk with me because she did not want to have an ex parte communication. So I'm asking you, sir, have you served the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office with a copy of this motion, and if so, when? Let me, let me go back here. No, answer my questions well, first. She, answer she, she, my she, questions she's, she's first. Been, she's been served. But in light of the court's questions here, let me tell you something. My important, the most important thing here is fundamental fairness for Mateen Cleves, okay? I'm this, not no, ready no, to no, hear court, this argument, court, Mr. No, Matt. No, no, my courtroom. I understand, but you can answer you depend my on, questions. On the, on the questions, and I'm going to give you an answer on the times. You said I had time. Yes, you, you did. You made an assumption. And the assumption is incorrect. Okay, then the straighten the, out my assumption. The assumption is incorrect. Fundamental fairness for Mr. Cleves. These are things that were not turned over by the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office in terms of whether she worked and so on. My investigation has been ongoing. This woman, this complainant, supposedly worked for the Wayne County Sexual Abuse Task Force. They didn't tell me about that. We'll they get didn't into say that. We'll get into the motion, Mr. Manley. Okay, I know you're quite passionate about the timing. I'm just learning about this stuff. Okay, okay. if you're I'm just learning, learning about it as we go on. So the idea that somehow I hid in the woods and it should have been filed earlier, that's erroneous. All right, I'll apologize then. Let me ask you though, why, when did you find this out? As we go on, we were, fi we were working on this motion probably nine minutes to four yesterday. Well, it was filed at nine minutes to four. So then, then ten minutes to four. Okay. Have you served Miss Lindsay with a copy? I have. And when did you do that? Just this morning. Okay. Miss Lindsay, have you had an opportunity to review the motion? I have not, Your Honor. As it relates to um, this case, a probable cause conference was held in this matter. The purpose of a probable cause conference is to give notice of any motions that will be filed. We got no notice of any motion that was filed, uh, and I'm referring specifically to um, Michigan uh, MCL 766.4, which deals with what takes place at a probable cause conference. 
specifically uh, subsection C talks about you're supposed to have uh, discussions regarding stipulations and procedural aspects of the case, procedural aspects such as when our motion is going to be filed and things of that nature. Uh, defense counsel never said anything at all about uh, any motions. Second of all, his claim that he just found these things out, we don't have to take his word for it. We need to have testimony and evidence as to when he supposedly just found these things out because this stuff is news to me. Uh, and to be served with motions, and furthermore, I assert to the court, Your Honor, Mr. Manley has both my office email address and my personal email address. I gave him those email addresses to reach me because there were times when I was not being able to work because I had illness I understand. in my family. I understand. So he had the opportunity to email me this motion last night. He did not do so. The only inference I can draw from that is because he wanted to ambush me this morning and make a big grandstand okay, in front of the press. Okay, stop. I, what, stop. Stop. I'm not going to have this kind of unprofessional ambushing, all that kind of stuff. That's not, no. That's not going to happen in this well, proceeding. Well, can you ask him why he didn't email me last night when he had my email address? We're not going to do that this morning. But, but not gonna You're not going to do it either. I'm not going to answer the ambush thing from a woman who stood up here and got in front of a press and got a headline for a second victim with no evidence that's been presented in a month for that. To come in here and cry about this, that's totally, totally, it's laughable. Okay, that it's is laughable. That still that doesn't address why Stop. the email address. Stop. Why he emailed me last night. Stop. Now, I've been extremely patient with people. This is not the way I run my courtroom, and I will not allow it to be used this way. This court has believed for over 25 years in fairness and justice, both for victims and defendants. And I'm not going to have the two of you claim to the press. I'm the person that counts here. This is a district court proceedings. It's a preliminary exam. I'm the person that counts. I'm not going to have you playing to the press, and you're not going to be conducting yourselves in this manner. Is that understood, Mr. Manley? Absolutely, yes. That understood, Ms. Lindsay? Yes, ma'am. Now, Mr. Manley yes. and Ms. Lindsay. Ms. Lindsay, I understand your definition of a probable cause hearing, ma'am. I do. Um... <coughs> been involved with them for a long time. Mr. Manley, all right, let's assume for a moment you didn't find out about this stuff. I want to know from Miss Lindsay, have you had an opportunity to review it to the extent, only to the extent, ma'am, would you like to file a written response? Obviously I would. I can't present it with a, uh, a motion uh, it looks to be several several pages of case law, but I haven't had a time to read the case law or check the case law. Uh, so no, I cannot intelligently respond to it today. Uh, and I would like an opportunity to respond to it in writing. And Mr. Manley, I think she deserves that chance. And I have no problem with that. Okay. I would like to, to get the stuff in a timely fashion talk about probable cause conferences, I would like to get the stuff in a timely fashion. I think there's all kinds of stuff that's not being turned over, and I'd like to, uh, this is not, this is the tip of the iceberg. It so might be the tip of I the get iceberg. It, As it relates to that, I filed a motion of, for discovery on defense counsel when this case was first filed. I haven't got a single bit of discovery from him, so where's my discovery? Uh, as far as I know, the defense is under no obligation whatsoever to give discovery. There's a presumption of innocence. You yes. cite me the case law yes. there's and a you say the court rule right on point. Judge. Give me the court MCR, rule. Uh, She's talking about reciprocal discovery. Yeah, there and, is and the stuff right. that's appropriate out there. Okay. He All right. That, that's fine. He admits what? There is a I said we're not going to do this. Fine, Judge. I'll get it. Well, Judge, as it relates to that, there is a court rule that deals with I believe you. discovery, 
and he has not given me anything. He claims he's had private investigators out <coughs> doing all this work. Where's my discovery? I don't, that sounds like the second victim. I never claimed I had any private I'm, investigators. I'm not going to have this, Mr. Manley. That would then tell us. I'm not going to have it. Then Harry, uh, abide by your rulings. I'm not going to see her like a potted plant. Okay, Miss Lindsay, when you get a moment, ma'am, um, I will hold Mr. Manley to that court rule. I have them in front of me, um, but I think you said a number MCR seven something. Six. Okay, six applies to criminal. Six, six point two zero one mandatory discovery that indicates. Do you have your copy of the court rules, Mr. Manley? I think Mr. Bigger does, if we don't. I think we have an encyclopedic knowledge of them. You said, Ms. Lindsay, 6.201? Yes, MCR 6.201, discovery. I would ask you to read 6.001. Six, parents B. A. Miss Lindsay? Yes. I would ask you to refer to 6.0001. That's two zeros and a one. Parents B. I need to find the judge. Sure. I do not see that 6.201 is applicable in misdemeanor cases. It is in felony cases, which this is. So I am going to hold you, Mr. Manley, to 6.2 in terms of discovery for felony cases. And you will see as I proceed further this morning, where I'm going to hold you to that. That's fine. Sir. Okay? No problem. Okay. Now, we know that Miss Lindsay is going to need some time uh, to file a written motion, not motion, answer to the motion. Um, there's two, both, there's two I understand there's two motions. <coughs> Ms. Lindsay, I'm going to address myself to you. Because, of course, this was delivered at 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, I had several hours last night reading this. And it, it, it would appear to me that until there's a decision made on these motions, we cannot go forward with the preliminary exam today. That's just my swift opinion. Um, it would appear to me that the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office needs time to answer these. And I'm asking now for scheduling. I'm going to tell you we're not going forward. So I'm going to ask you for scheduling. And uh, Ms. Lindsay? Judge, before yes. scheduling, can I can I ask at this point, are there any further motions that are planning on being filed? Because if there are, I would like to be able to respond to them all at the same time and not have anything like this come up again. That's exactly where I'm going with this. In terms of scheduling, um, the, I, I got to move this case faster, Mr. Manley. That's fine. You know, now wait a minute, right. I'm not done talking. Right. 
What I'm anticipating is that Ms. Lindsay is going to need about two weeks to answer this motion. I'm going to need a week to read it. This is what I require. Ms. Lindsay, you don't know me well. I'm going to ask, ma'am, that you keep your brief very short. What I would prefer above all is copies of the case law you're going to rely on. I like to read the cases myself. Mr. Manley, all the cases that you cited, I want those too. Your brief is in, I want the cases so I can read them myself. We're going to get a chance to respond to what you uh, In a minute. Okay. So that's the first thing, Ms. Lindsay, on your response is any case law, I'd like the cases attached. Mr. Manley, I expect the cases to be attached that you've cited, and you've already done the brief, so all I need is a case law, all right, That's from fine. you. I'm thinking she needs two weeks to respond. I'm thinking I need a week to go through it. Just tentatively, and without either one of you going off, I'm looking at hearing these motions, and making a decision, and depending on what my decision is, beginning the preliminary exam July 29th at 9 o'clock in the morning and devoting the whole day. Now, Ms. Lindsay, does that fit into your... <coughs> I have no other dates. That's the day I have. Um, we can make the 29th work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, I know you haven't had much time to read the motion, all right? I just want to... I just want to give you a couple of scenarios from my reading of it. One of the prayers for relief is that I disqualify the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. And in the alternative, that I hold an evidentiary hearing to see whether they should be disqualified. That's correct. I knew it was correct. That's why I made this statement. Ms. Lindsay, would it be much of a problem to submit your written motion to me along with your case law and then, although you wouldn't know which way I was going to decide, have whoever is necessary for an evidentiary hearing if that's the way I decide to go? Because I don't know, only you would know who you're going to need and you probably don't even know I'm putting you on the spot because you haven't read it. Your Honor, I, I don't think at this point I can intelligently discuss that. Um, so I, I just think we should just go ahead and schedule it for argument and then you make whatever ruling you're going to make and then we proceed from there. I'm really, I'm blindsided. I, I, I know you're blindsided. Response. I know you're blindsided. The court was blindsided, too. However, Mr. Manley makes the argument he was blindsided. No, I make, I make that, but I also make the argument I'm less concerned about speed than I am about doing it right. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, okay, because all the things that have, To do it right is the most important thing here. Absolutely. Not, not to, I'm not that concerned about I'm very respectful of the court's timing, and the, but the key is to do it right, and that's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about Mateen Cleaves. Not the niceties about, and we throw out buzzwords about blindsided, about being blindsided. We'll get to that in the motion. But blindsided is like killing your parents and then crying that you're an orphan. It's, uh, I'm not worried about it. Doing it right is what we're there. And we're ready for the 29th. That's, that's a good day. You understand that that's what the court is concerned about. Correct. All right. So let's discuss the technicalities of it then. 
do you have any other motions that you might be going to file based on the fact that you have evidently some continuing investigating that you're doing? Yes. I'm going to ask for a standaway motion. A what? A standaway motion. Okay. It's to designed to have the complainant's uh, psychiatric records That's already examined been. in okay. camera. Uh, so th I'm, I'm filing that as a follow-up. Okay. When will you be filing that? Probably within the next week. Assuming some exist, but, but e Go ahead, Miss Lindsay. Just don't be playing to the press. Play to me. Judge, the whole thing is... We know some exist. Uh, I mean, we know that. Bottom line. We had a probable cause conference. Why is all this coming up now? I'm going to tell you why. You haven't had a chance to read it, Miss Lindsay. I know that. But certain events have taken place within the last week that have, mis that have come to light that Mr. Manley is concerned about. Thank you, Judge. My question is, and I would like you to address it in your response, Miss Lindsay, when you get a chance to thoroughly study this motion is do I as a district court judge district court even have the authority to do what you're asking me to do Mr. Manley that's one thing I want to hear from the prosecutor is whether I even have the authority I'm assuming you think I do or you wouldn't have filed the motion that's correct um, but Miss Lindsay when you get a chance you'll see that something has happened within the last week. I understand that, Judge, but what I'm saying is, is this standaway motion going to be a separate standalone motion from what he's just filed? Yes. There's going to be, yes. be a follow-up motion. How long is it going to take you to, to do it? I said probably within the next week. You know? See, that, that put me behind the eight ball in terms of probably within the next week. Then I'm going to have to hustle and try to respond to both motions, which is fundamentally unfair. I mean, if, 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 even if it arose within the last week, he has a whole staff, a whole law firm. So do you. He could have, no, I do not have a whole staff and a whole law firm. And I only can respond to what's brought in front of me. And since nothing was brought in front of me, uh, so the timing of the dates, I mean, when, I, when are we going to get okay. this motion? And I would like then let's respond to that. Likewise, all right. Let's do. Judge, let, yes. me, let, let me just indicate to the court. Okay. My schedule is set. Judge, I'm not saying that I'm not going to file this motion. Okay. I am not going to file this motion. Okay. I'm 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 not week I have a major homicide on the 7th uh, that, and another major homicide preliminary examination with three defendants that's scheduled on the 11th that's supposed to go all week. So in addition to respond to the motions, I have other homicide cases I must respond to. So as a matter of fairness, you know, you can't give me one week and then I'm already responding to two motions and then he's going to, in a week or so, he says, file his standaway motion. Well, I think your hey, answer... Can I, re can I respond to this? Yes, you can. I, I'm, a, I'm a solo practitioner. She's got the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, the largest prosecutor's office in the state, and she has the audacity to stand up and say she doesn't have a lock and wave her face. That's ridiculous. They have a whole appellate division. I understand I, I've that. got Mr. Bigger. I understand that. I, I mean, are you, are you kidding me? Okay, and then, I uh, think she's got, she says, I have an investigator. She's got law enforcement across the board. And the reason, one of the things that I'm talking about, about doing it right, she knows. Does Sanford ring a bell to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office? I want to do it right. Put play into the cameras and play to me. All right, well, I'm playing to you. I want to do it right. She knows what I'm talking about. I think, Miss Lindsay, that what the court needs to do in open court, no ex parte communications, is to fashion a miscellaneous order for scheduling these motions so that Ms. Lindsay and Mr. Manley both have a chance to fairly 
present their law to the court. So, with July 29th in mind, Ms. Lindsay. All right, no, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Manley. Give me a date certain your motion is going to be filed on the Stanaway hearing. Give me, give me one moment. July 6th. July 6th. Um, Ms. Lindsay, you must serve that motion either, do you have Ms. Lindsay's email? I do, I can get it. Okay, you're to serve it on her either by email or by fax <coughs> on the 6th. That's fine. Ms. Lindsay, ma'am. Your Honor. Yes. I would prefer, can we have it served by email? Because um, depending on what fax machine, uh, if we have a multitude of fax machines in our office. Sometimes they're out of toner. Uh, sometimes other people grab faxes. And so it, it, the surest way to get it is by email. And he has two separate email addresses for me. So. That, that's no problem. All right. Then it's to be served that day by email. And when I say that day, I mean business hours, 8 to 5. That's fine. Now I'll turn to you, Miss Lindsay. Will two weeks after the 6th give you enough time to respond to what is now three motions? Yes. Will that give you enough time, ma'am? Yes. All right. So answers are to be filed please note my order says with accompanying case law no later than 4 p.m. on the 20th. I can serve the answer back the same way by email. If you want it that way. That's fine. Do you want it that way? Yes. Easier that way, everybody can keep track. Miss Lindsay, do you want any time, ma'am, to be able to file a mo uh, a response to his res his? Uh, I'm getting confused here. Do you want any time to respond to his, Mr. Manley? Do you want any time to respond to her responses? Yes. Okay, how long do you want? Week. Okay. Response to prosecutor's motions. N prosecutor's response. No later than the close of business. July 27th to be served, Miss Lindsay, I'm assuming by email to you. Yes. 
when you're under the court form are all our findings filings to be sent. I'm you. sorry, Miss Lindsay, I didn't oh, hear I'm you. I'm sorry. Would the court want our filings to be filed to you by way of email? I would prefer not. Okay. I would prefer it in <laughs> writing because I would prefer it be in writing okay. because I like to mark things up and highlight and make notes and red and blue and all this kind of stuff. I would prefer not. Um, we will hold a hearing on these motions on July 29th, 2016 at 9 a.m. Is there anything I haven't covered? Um, on the 29th, of the court want us to have the witnesses ready for the exam? Well, the I'm kind of wondering, because um, here's some scenarios. Just let me put it through to you, Ms. Lindsay. Oh, yeah. These motions and responses, um, the parties must give the court authority, meaning statute, case law, all of that. I got you, manly on criminal law. I got you. Yeah. We're all good. Uh, authority on whether the court can decide these matters. This court. They may be circuit court matters. But if it's circuit court matters, then I'd ask that this court, if for some reason if this court feels that you can't make that decision, I would like the court then to allow us to bring the motion to circuit court and stay this matter. This is a very important matter. This I understand this is very important. So, I, But I want to put the court on notice. If the court deems that you can't make that decision, then I, I'm going to ask that I haven't court deemed stay it. this. I haven't deemed it yet. No, I, I understand. But then I would take it up to the next court. And I, I would assume that would be your privilege. <coughs> what a mess this is. My order I'm talking about. Uh, I thought you were <laughs> I won't say that. Thank you, Judge. Okay, now. Which one? Somebody's got a microphone next to the microphone that's on the jury box that's got to be moved. We're getting feedback. Okay, now, Your Honor, just for the record, um, I only he presented me with two sheets, two staple uh, sets of paper, but there's only one motion. So if there's okay, two motions, okay, let me tell you what I have: defendant's motion for competency evaluation of the victim. Do you Never have that? It. No, I do not. Make sure she gets it right yeah, now. It was just a circle. I have a brief in support of defendant's motion for evaluation. Do you have that? No, I do not. Make sure she gets a copy of that yes, right now. Mr. Bigger is going through that right now. I have a defendant's motion to disqualify the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Yes, I have that. I have a brief in support of the motion to disqualify the <laughs> Wayne County's Prosecutor's that Office. That is all I have. All right. <laughs> now, Miss Lindsay. You asked me about going forward with the preliminary exam. I happen to side with Mr. Manley on this. Uh, I know the Supreme Court likes us to get things done in 21 days, but sometimes you just can't do it in 21 days and be fair. Um, Judge, I just want, needed to know for scheduling. I, have to I, I understand, so I'm going there with you. All right. There's a couple of different scenarios here. Let's assume, just for the sake of argument, Miss Lindsay, that I do have the jurisdiction to grant his motion to disqualify the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Let's just assume that. I'm, I'm with you. Okay. If I grant that motion, the preliminary exam won't start because somebody else has got to step in. Right? Correct. And more than likely, if I grant that motion, you're going to take me right up to circuit court, right? right? So I'm going to guess at this point we're not going to proceed 
with the preliminary exam on July 29th. I don't think you have to bother to bring your witnesses in and all that because I think we need to deal with these preliminary matters first. What I was more concerned with, Ms. Lindsay, was, again, a hypothetical. Let's assume that I read, I've read his motion. Let's assume I read your response and any response he has to you, and I decide, hmm, I want an evidentiary hearing. That's kind of what I was asking you. Did you want me to conduct that the same day? You're the one that has to drive up here from Detroit, so I'm trying to be deferential to you. And I know you don't know yet because you haven't had an opportunity to review it, but I'm telling you right now, you'd have to bring up, I'm assuming, Kim Worthy, and you'd have she to bring... She made a face, but that's exactly who I want. I know who you want. You, you can walk, but you want people in hell on I walk. Well, uh, I'm not going to have that because if I order Miss Kim Worthy to be here, she will be here. Thank you, Judge. Um, there may be executives from TNT. Exactly. There may be executives from the New York Times and or their representatives. And I'm telling you this, Miss Lindsay, and I know you have a confused look on your face because you, you haven't had the advantage of reading the thing like I have. So um, I ask you, do you want to just do this hearing? Because chances are one of you is going to appeal me to circuit court no matter what I do. Uh, I just want to have the arguments on the motions, and then if the court orders a hearing, then we do that on another day. Okay, and I think that's fair because... I have no problem with that. Yeah, because either one of you could decide probably... More than likely, one of you is going to decide that I didn't decide it the right way. All right? So, I don't think there's anything more we can do today. I'm not going to start the preliminary exam because I have this preliminary question in front of me. And if you're right, Mr. Manley, then I can't start it today. I agree, Judge. Thank you. <coughs> so, we're adjourned. Bond continues. The hearing starts July 29th at 9 a.m., Mr. Manley. Thank you, Judge. Please approach Ms. Strelkeld for copies of the scheduling order. Your Honor? Um, yes, Ms. Lindsay. I don't want to talk off the record. Oh, Anything okay. you got to say to me, you say on the record. Your Honor, the people are going to make a motion. Just a minute, ma'am. Let me check and make sure okay. we're on the record. Everybody be seated, please. Okay, we're back on the record in the matter of Mateen Cleves, 16T538FY. Yes, Miss Lindsay. Your Honor, the people are making a motion to have the, the uh, all motions and filings until they're heard and decided by the court filed under seal, have a protective order on it, because there are certain things that can be put in a motion that it is not true, uh, that's just out there. And uh, I think it's very dangerous because you can use your motions for, as a platform to say all kinds of things to prejudice the case. I'm going to ask that the motions and the filing of the pleadings be filed under seal until they are heard in open court. Okay, I, I'm going to comment back and then give both of you an opportunity. I attempted to seal an item in this case already, not because I was afraid of pretrial uh, publicity or the fact that there might be an incapability of the trial judge to pick a fair jury. My concern was for any potential witnesses <coughs> and their phone numbers and addresses being released and under 8.119, I think it's I, having those witnesses harassed. This court was taken up on superintending control, and I was overturned. Which leads me to believe, Miss Lindsay, that we are now in the day and age where fairness 
and impartiality is trumped by sensationalism. I would be more than happy to grant that kind of order to, and please let me get 8119 in front of me, all right? Because one of these motions is extremely sensitive. And the court, I believe, can, uh, under that rule, uh, make that finding for the protective order for the motion. And I believe... Uh, okay, let me just read okay. this to you. Except as otherwise provided by statute or court rule, a court may not enter an order that seals court records in whole or in part in any action or proceeding unless a a party has filed a written motion that identifies the specific interest to be protected b the court has made a finding of good cause in writing or on the record which specifies the grounds for the order and c there is no less restrictive means to adequately and effectively protect the specific interest asserted in determining whether good cause has been shown, the court must consider the interest of the parties, including whether there is an allegation of domestic violence, the safety of the alleged or potential victim of the domestic violence, and the interest of the public. The court must provide any interested person the opportunity to be heard concerning the sealing of the records. I think that's the court rule I'm bound by. That is true. And uh, so far, there's no written motion. Okay. And that's A. Um, I, I will have a written motion to the court later today. And um, but, but you may fax that to me at 810-341-5005. Because in terms of the Stanaway motion, um, the Stanaway motion is what I am most concerned about. And, and the it, court and, is and also. And it has not been properly filed as far as I'm concerned because as it relates to proper filing, I, it's my understanding that it has to go through the clerk's office and everything. Could the court... It um, did go through the clerk's office, Ms. Lindsay. I tried to give you copies of the motion to read this morning and you didn't want to speak to me. And well, that's fine. Okay. I understand no, no, your position. I, well, I but here's the court well, clerk please, stamp right here. Judge, can we please make a record of what happened? Please. Because the court keeps saying it. The court indicated, wanted to speak to me, and I indicated I didn't want to have any ex parte that's with true. the court. That's true. And then the court, in my opinion, seemed to take offense to me saying that I did not want to speak to the court parte. So I had my officer in charge come to try to get the motion. And then the officer in charge, could you please assert to, the, to put on the record what You don't happened? have to. He no, did. No, no, Judge, I, w I would like to make a record. I have a right to make a record because the court has said certain things on the record that I need to address. And I, and I wasn't going to address them, but the court keeps making it seem like I didn't try to get the motion. No, I'm done. trying to say you did things properly. Okay, but, but please... Mr. Uh, Detective Neary, when I asked you to come into the court and get the motions, could you explain, could you put on the record what the judge told you? That you did not, uh, the judge did not, you did, want, did not want to have an ex parte conversation and that uh, she was trying to give it to you and that you're not entitled to them right now. The, the judge, no, could you tell me the exact words you said the judge said yeah. when... Uh, that's, her, that's her problem. That when you came back and, and, and you exactly told, what and, I said, and you told Mr. Manley because I didn't take them from you at that point in time, it was my problem that I didn't have the motions, and you did not give the written motions to the officer in charge in order for me to review them. I was only trying to avoid the appearance of impropriety, so no one can say I was having an ex parte conversation with the court. I was trying to do things the right way, so I sent my officer in charge to you get the motions. You also sent Mr. Muscat. I sent two people. Yep. I sent my officer in charge first to get the motion. Must and you said, lawyer, and just for the record. Yes, he Musk gave me a P number. Oh, so he would be from the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. I don't know where he's from. So, I mean, the idea can, that can, you would have one can, witness. No, I want to can, clarify can this. Can you stop interrupting me? If you want to do anything, you do it you, after you I get through talking. You need to clarify the record. No, if you want to clarify the record, you, you do it after I get through talking. 
Okay. Judge, can you identify for the record who this mascot is? Judge, can I finish what I'm saying before we get into all of that? Because I think it is rude to interrupt me in the middle of what I'm trying to place on the record. She placed on that she didn't have ex parte contact, and she sends in a, a representative of the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. To but the court. Can't be six Judge, can you, can, you quit? can you tell him to so quit interrupting? Stop. 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 No let her clear the record, then I'm going to clear the record, and you can clear the record. Thank you, Judge. So I sent the OIC in to get a copy of the motions. You told the OIC that since I didn't take them from you at that time, it was my problem that I didn't have them. Mr. Muscat came in to ask the clerk. I don't not have a clerk. Well, well, he came in to ask a court person from the court staff, not the judge, but a person from the court staff from the motions, and we did not get the motions at that point. That's true. Mr. Muscat is a, uh, a prosecutor at the Wayne County Prosecuting Attorney's Office, and I was not trying to have ex parte conversation with the court, but the court seemed to take offense that I did not get them from the court at the time, and then when I tried to get them, the court said it's my problem that I didn't have them, which I don't know why the court wouldn't just have the clerk or, or the court staff give me a copy of the motions, but the court was... I, in my opinion, and like you indicated earlier, I don't know you, Judge. This is, uh, I'm, I'm the new kid in town. And the court said it was my problem that I did not get the motions. And, I, and, and quite frankly, Judge, I cannot understand what me saying that I wanted to do it properly would have invoked that response from a the court. Then I'm going to tell you. You said you didn't want to talk. I said all I wanted to do was see if you had a copy of the motion. You didn't want to talk, so I walked away, and I figured we'd just wait till Mr. Manley got here, and then I'd make sure that you had a copy of the motion. I did not give them to Detective Nearing, and I did not give them to Mr. Muscat, because that would have been, in my opinion, ex parte communications, which you had already said you didn't want to have, which was fine with me. Well, then so, well, you know. That, that, okay, I respect the court saying that, but... The court did not say that to eat to uh, Detective. Uh, I said it's Neary. her problem because I tried. But, but I said it's her problem, judge, and if you took offense, that's no, your problem. It wasn't meant no, it's to not be my offensive. Problem. I thought it was your problem when you said it was my problem. I couldn't have the motion. I have never, in all my years of practicing law, have a court or a court staff refuse to give motions to an attorney who asked for motions that had been properly filed. The court did say it was my problem. That's not the, the choice of the court's words. It was my problem. That sounds very abstutinal that uh, because I want it to be proper and do things the proper way, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I think the court did take offense and the court took it out on uh, Detective uh, Nearing by not giving me a copy of the motion. So essentially, I sat for 45 minutes or so. I could have been reviewing the motions at that point in time, but the court refused to give them to me. Okay, are you quite done? Yes, I am. Thank you. You have something to say, Mr. Manley? I can't top that. Nothing. It seems like according to the... I can't top that. Sometimes, I mean, the, I can't top... I mean, in terms of attitudinal, I can't top that. Well, let me reassure everybody, this court doesn't have an attitude towards anybody, all right? You've practiced in front of me long enough, Mr. Manley, to know that my personal opinion is that fairness and justice is deserved by all. And I, uh, Ms. Uh, Lindsay did not want to talk to me this morning. All I wanted to know if she had copies of the motions because I was going to offer her copies. She indicated she didn't want to talk to me. Once she indicates that, as far as I'm concerned, she's the lead attorney. And Detective Nearing is her OIC. M am I pronouncing your name right, sir? Muscat or Muscat? Muscat. Muscat. I'm just really here to push the buttons on the computer. Doesn't matter. You got a P number, you're with Miss Lindsay, so um, as far as I was concerned, it was their problem until they got here, you got here, and supplied them with copies. The court did not feel that I should give copies, that that was something that should be taken up between the two of you because, quite frankly, I felt that, uh, and 
might still feel that Miss Lindsay has got a right to be a little teed off so about the non service. So that. if I she took it personally me last time on that when she jumped on the second victim. So well if she that. took yeah, I understand. No so if she took it personally, I'm sorry. That's not the way it was uh meant at all. So now you anything else that needs to be put on the record? You want to chastise me anymore, either one of you? No, I think you did a great job. Then we're adjourned and I have nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. Then we're adjourned and bond continues. I'll see you July 29th at 9 a.m. Thank you. Yeah.